Zanzibar is a beautiful island off the coast of mainland Tanzania and it's very popular with tourists because of its tropical beaches with white sand and turquoise water, which is the stuff of our holiday dreams. However, there is much more this tropical paradise has to offer, from spectacular nature and wildlife to incredible culture, history and tradition. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the top 5 things to do in Zanzibar beyond exploring its wonderful beaches. I'll create a separate video specifically about the beaches, so remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And I also have a playlist about Zanzibar with lots of videos for you to watch in the meantime. Number 5. Prison Island As the name suggests, this island used to be a prison. In 1893, the island was bought by a man named Lloyd Matthews, who was the British Minister of Zanzibar at the time. He's the one who initially built the prison complex on the island, and you can still see his house there as well. However, it never ended up being used as a prison, and instead it was used as a quarantine facility. Later on in the 1960s, the same building was turned into a restaurant for tourists, which is why the inside is very bright and colorful, but it was definitely not like this back in the day. Nowadays, the island is much more famous for its Aldabra giant tortoises. These were a gift from the governor of the Seychelles, who gave four tortoises to Zanzibar in 1919. They were allowed to breed and form a colony, and they were later transferred to Prison Island for protection, since they used to get stolen often. The oldest tortoise is 197 years old and was one of the original four tortoises that was gifted by the governor. You can actually pet and feed these tortoises during the tour, which is really, really cool. The snorkeling around the island is also great and there's a really nice coral reef nearby. Prison Island is just a short 30 minute boat ride away from Stonetown and it's also pretty close to the Nakupenda Sandbank so a lot of people group those two places together in one tour. Number 4. Josani National Park Josani Chwaka Bay National Park is quite possibly Tanzania's most underrated national park. However, Josani is quite special for a few reasons. Firstly, it's the only national park in the Zanzibar archipelago and it's also the largest untouched and pristine forest in Zanzibar Island. It also has some really rare wildlife, most notably the red colobus monkey. While other species of colobus monkey live throughout Africa, the red colobus monkey only lives in the islands of Pemba and Zanzibar, and there are only an estimated 5,000 individuals living in the wild. The largest concentration of these monkeys is found in Josani Forest, and a lot of the tours to this national park focus on trying to find the elusive species hidden amongst the treetops. Josani also has an incredible mangrove forest. Mangrove trees are very important for the environment. They absorb a lot of CO2 from the atmosphere, much more than the average tree, and the roots are also incredibly important for the quality of the soil and for biodiversity, since they allow young fish to hatch and grow before going to the open ocean. Josani is definitely not as famous as other Tanzanian national parks such as the Serengeti, but I think it's a shame that not more people know about it, especially since it's located in one of Tanzania's tourism hotspots, yet less than 10% of the people who visit Zanzibar will visit Josani. Number 3. Snorkeling Zanzibar is without a doubt one of the best places to go snorkeling in all of Africa. It has some truly incredible coral reefs and all around juvenile lionfish, shrimps, pipefish, small morays and puffers and many more species can be seen easily. You can also see species such as the Arabian angelfish, the palette surgeonfish aka dory, the powder blue tang and the black spotted rubber lip. The red knobbed starfish can be seen in some places as well and dozens of species of sea urchins. About the sea urchins though, I should warn you that there's lots of them in the beaches in Zanzibar and it's so easy to step on them, so if you don't want to get your foot stabbed when visiting beaches in Zanzibar, always wear flip-flops or some kind of shoe. Some of the most accessible places to go snorkeling are Nangui Beach, Bongwe Beach, Paja Beach and Jambiani Beach. All of these are popular tourist destinations and you don't need a tour to go to any of these places. You can just put on your goggles and get in the water, so it's great if you're on a budget. However, while snorkeling here is good, it's not the best Zanzibar has to offer. There are also many islets surrounding Stone Town, so one of them is Prison Island, which I talked about before, but there's also Chumba Island, Bawe Island, Pange Island and Chapuani Island. If you're staying in Nangui, you should consider going on a tour to Tumbatu Island. Most tours will take you to Mwana Wamwana Island, which is an islet north of Tumbatu that is quite preserved. If you're planning to trip to Zanzibar, by the way, and you don't know where to stay, I have a video that talks about this more in detail. I'll make sure I put it on the screen so you can watch it after this video. 
Perhaps the most famous snorkeling spot in Zanzibar though is Mamba Island. I have personally been here and I can confirm that the snorkeling here is incredible and even though it can get a bit crowded, it's 100% worth it. However, I have to warn you, you will see many agencies offer tours to swim with dolphins, particularly around Kizimkazi and Mamba Island, and I do not recommend you participate in these tours. I personally didn't know this, so along with my snorkeling tour in Mamba, I chose to do a bit of dolphin watching and I was pretty horrified at what I saw. There's dozens of boats going around chasing the poor animals just so tourists can get a glimpse of them. And you can also get in the water with the dolphins, but I thought that was quite dangerous because there's dozens of motorboats with a propeller still on and you're swimming with wild animals in a high stress situation, which can be pretty dangerous as well. While dolphin attacks are pretty rare, you should know that they can be very, very dangerous and even lethal. Number 2. Go on a spice tour Zanzibar is often referred to as the Spice Island because of its excellent quality spices and the history surrounding them. Zanzibar's spice trade traces its roots back to ancient times, when merchants from India, Persia and Arabia embarked on maritime voyages to East Africa. They were drawn there by the abundance of spices and this caused the traders to establish a flourishing trade network with settlements all along the Swahili coast, including Zanzibar. Then came the spice that changed it all, cloves. Cloves were introduced in the 19th century by Omani traders and at the time they were as valuable as gold. Zanzibar's fertile soil and tropical climate made it the ideal place for the best quality cloves to grow, making it the largest producer in the world and establishing Zanzibar as a bustling hub of commerce. The island's strategic location along the ancient spice routes made it a pivotal point for the exchange of goods, ideas and traditions between Africa, Asia and the Arab world, contributing to the multicultural and multi-religious climate that you can experience in Zanzibar today. However, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. During this time, while the spice trade was very important to the economy, it was secondary to something much darker the slave trade. The slave trade was, for a very long time, Zanzibar's main source of income. Eventually, the island's political climate changed so that the spice cultivation and trade became the island's main source of income once again. Today, Zanzibar's income depends almost exclusively on tourism, and spice tours are very popular. In these tours, you can not only learn about the spice's fundamental role in Zanzibar's history, but you also tour an actual spice farm and you can see and learn about the cultivation and harvesting process. I personally found this experience to be super interesting. I saw lots of fruits and spices that I didn't even know existed before, and what shocked me the most is how different the spices look when they're grown in the soil versus how they look when they're processed and sold. I also learned about the use of many of the plants, and not just the culinary use, but also the medicinal and even the cosmetic use. My favorite is this fruit that is used as a lipstick. Local women here in Zanzibar open it up and they squish the inside of it to create this red paste and then they put it on their lips. The spice trade has, without a doubt, left an indelible mark on Zanzibar's culture and identity, so doing a spice tour when you're in Zanzibar is a must. And number one, Stonetown. As you can probably tell by now, Zanzibar has a really fascinating and rich history as well as really rich cultural heritage and traditions. And there is no better place to experience all of that than Stonetown. Stonetown is Zanzibar city's old quarter and it's actually called Stonetown because it's built from coral stone. Because of trade, it has cultural influences from places like India, Persia, Arabia, but also some European countries like the United Kingdom and Portugal. And of course, it has very significant cultural influences from the African mainland. This mix of cultures has come to be known as Swahili culture. All of these cultural influences can be seen in Stonetown's architecture. This is the Stonetown Fort, which was built by the Omani Sultanate in the 17th century, and these structures connecting two buildings are also an influence from Oman. Balconies are very common all throughout Stonetown, and they're an influence from Gujarat in India, but some of them were covered by the Omanis for modesty purposes. The fact that Zanzibar has had so many cultural influences from so many places around the world means that it's also very religiously diverse. So while most of the population adheres to Islam, you can also find Hindu temples in the city like this one, and this is one of the many mosques in Stonetown. You can also find a Catholic and an Anglican cathedral here as well. These are Zanzibar's traditional doors. Each door is unique and there's not another one like it in the world. The artisans who craft them do so with their future owner in mind and the wooden carvings are meant to represent their occupation, religious beliefs and position in society. However, the brass studs on the doors are actually an influence from India. 
In Zanzibar, they used to represent wealth, but in India, their original use was as protection against war elephants. You can also see many doors in Zanzibar with mango leaves hanging above them. This is also an Indian tradition that is used for good fortune. And there are many more things you can do in Stonetown. Personally, I loved going to the market because markets like these don't exist where I'm from, so I find them very interesting. The fruit here is also incredibly good. Other great places are the terrace above Emerson and Hurumzi, the Foradani Market, and my personal favorite, watching the sunset at Stonetown Beach. There's actually a specific tour that I would recommend you go on when you're in Zanzibar, and that's the tour that Imran Jaffa offers. So I found his tours through his brother Ali Jaffa's YouTube channel, and he has some great videos about Stonetown and Zanzibar, and the tour with Imran was great. It was a 10 out of 10. It was genuinely one of the best tours that I've ever done in like all of my travels, like ever. So both Imran and Ali have YouTube channels, so I'll link them in the description down below in case you want to check them out. You can also watch my video about Stonetown, which is on my channel, and it's actually the first video that I ever posted and it's still one of my favorites. It has so much information and it's super useful. So yeah, you can go watch that and the rest of the Zanzibar playlist, which has more videos, which also have tons of valuable information. If you like this video, remember to subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it if you did and I'll see you in the next one.